Hello all, welcome to the Design of Machine Elements classroom. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the engineering materials and their properties. First, let me start with the classification of engineering materials. The engineering materials are basically classified into three. One is metals and another one is non-metals and composites. Further, the metals are classified into two. One is ferrous and another one is non-ferrous. If the metal has some iron content, then it comes under ferrous metals. If it doesn't have any iron content, then it comes under non-ferrous metal. There are uh, some examples of ferrous materials are given here. The steels, alloy steel, then stainless steel and finally the cast iron. Then few examples for uh, non-metals are ceramics, graphite, then plastics comes under non-metals and the elastomers comes under non-metals. Finally, the composites. So composites means two or more materials are combined together to form a new material. The materials are having different physical and uh, chemical properties. So for example, carbon and resin, then fiber glass and resin. These are all some of the examples of composite materials. The physical properties of metals, the first physical property is color, the color of the metal. So the color can be visualized with our naked eyes, then size and shape of the material, then density, so density, then electric and thermal conductivity, then the melting point. So these five comes under the physical properties. Okay, so here melting point means the temperature at which the metal starts to melt okay then electric and thermal conductivity means it is uh, the ability of the material to conduct electricity and heat so these are all uh, the physical properties of uh, metals then mechanical properties so the mechanical properties are very important for selecting any material for mechanical applications so we'll start with strength so what is strength of a material so strength is the ability of the material to resist externally applied forces without breaking or yielding. So here you can see that in the first image a 25 ton load is applied on a metal and it is uh, not deformed. And in the second image the metal deforms once after applying the 25 ton. So here this metal has some high strength that is this metal has the ability to withstand the externally applied load without breaking or without deforming. Okay, so this is called as strength. So for all the materials, for all the applications, the material should be of high strength. Then second one is stiffness. So stiffness means it is the ability of the material to resist deformation under stress. So it is the ability of the material to resist the deformation. If the material deforms in a high extent, then it has some low stiffness. If it deforms a less amount, then it has some high stiffness. So the stiffness can be written as K is equal to load by deflection. Then elasticity. So elasticity is the property of the metal to come to its original shape after deformation when the external forces are removed. So elasticity in the sense you just remember your elastic. So in the elastic when we apply the load it will deform and once after removing the load then the elastic will come to its original position. Okay. So elasticity is the property of a material to come to its original state after the removal of the external load. So here you can see the animation. So here the load is applied and the material deforms. So once after the load is removed, the material is coming back to its original position. So this property is called as elasticity. Then plasticity. So plasticity is opposite to the elasticity. It is the property of the material which retains the deformation. So which will not come back to its original shape when the load is removed. So this is for permanent deformation okay so you can see the image the metals are bended 
and once after removing the load the metal will be in its deformed shape it will not come to its original shape so that property is called as plasticity so plasticity in the sense you just remember your plastic so when you bend your plastic it will not come to its your original shape it will be in the deformed shape okay so elasticity and plasticity are opposite keep that in mind then ductility so ductility is the measure of a material's ability to undergo deformation plastic deformation before failure okay so here you can see that this is a metal and i am applying a tensile load here so it deforms to a greater extent so that property is called as ductility in the beams you can see that if i bend the beam then the beam will bend to a greater extent without failure so that property is called as ductility okay so in the construction sites people will bend the steel rods like this so the steel rods are bended and it allows deformation before failure so that property is called as ductility okay and in the ductility it will not come to its original shape after the removal of the force so it will be in the deformed shape the next one is brittleness so brittleness is the property of the material that fractures when subject to stress so here it will not allow any deformation okay so just remember your glass so you cannot bend your glass then you remember your uh, biscuit so brittleness in the sense you just remember your, your biscuit so you cannot bend the biscuit it will undergo a failure okay so that property is called as brittleness so ductility in the sense it will undergo deformation without failure and in brittleness it will not undergo any deformation then this is the difference between ductility and uh, brittleness so this material has some high ductility so you can see that the material deforms to a greater extent before the failure so this is also some low ductility is there so it deforms like this so actually the original will be like this so once after applying the load it will go like this so this process is called as neck formation okay so in brittle failure there will be no deformation simply the material will fail without uh, allowing any deformation so this is the difference between ductile failure and brittle failure then malleability so it's a special case property so it is the, the property that permits the materials to be rolled or hammered into thin sheets so if you can uh, hammer a metal into a or if you can uh, change a metal into a small coin using your hammer then that property is called as malleability okay so it allows impact loading by the hammer then toughness so from the name itself we can identify that if the material is able to resist fracture due to high impact load then it is a tough material okay so here it is a property of the material to resist high impact loads without failure okay so this is uh, measured in by the amount of energy stored in the material before failure so you can see that so when you apply the load the material will deform like the, i mean the stress strain curve will go like this and at this point it will undergo a failure so up to this point this material absorbs some amount of energy so that energy is called as toughness so if the material is have a good toughness property then it will absorb high amount of energy if it has low toughness property then it will amount a low amount of energy then resilience so resilience is the important property for springs because it will under absorb the energy only up to the elastic limit so within that elastic limit the material will absorb some amount of energy and that energy is called as resilience so you can see the definition it is the property of the material to absorb energy and to resist shock and impact loads up to elastic limit so here the energy will be absorbed up to the elastic limit in toughness it will be absorbed up to failure but here it will be absorbed up to the elastic limit then creep so it is a property of the material to resist deformation when the material is loaded with a very minimum magnitude of force 
with high temperature for a long period of time so here the magnitude of the force will be minimum but the material is kept in a high temperature environment for a long period of time so in that case it will undergo a slow and permanent deformation and that deformation is called as creep for example you can see that at 8 am the tree is like this and at 6 pm the tree bends like this okay so you have a huge time difference because the load is very minimum okay so that is why it is called as creep okay so this property is mainly used while designing ic engines because in ic engines and boilers the material is kept at some high temperature so this creep property is very much essential for materials used in ic engines boilers and turbines then fatigue so fatigue is a common failure when a material is subjected to repeated stresses it fails at stress below the yielding point so here you can see that i am applying an up and down motion in this rod and when i apply up and down motion the stress will be induced here and it will fail before it reaches the yield point we know that all the material reaches its all the material fails when it reaches its yield point but if we load statically in the case of fatigue the material will fail before it reaches the yield point because some huge amount of stress concentration will be there at this material because of fatigue you can imagine a rod you cannot bend the rod you can imagine a steel rod okay so you cannot uh, uh, break the rod by using force in only one direction so what generally we will do is we will apply a up and down motion so we will bend like this so initially we will bend like this then we will change the direction and we will bend in the opposite direction so that is called as fatigue okay so in this type of loading we can easily break the material so that is called as fatigue failure so fatigue is the property of the material to withstand the repeated stresses then hardness so hardness is the measure of the resistance to localized plastic deformation so it is the ability of the material to resist localized plastic deformation okay so the plastic deformation may be because of two one is mechanical indentation and abrasion so in case of mechanical indentation you can see that the diamond die is pressed in case of ceramics the you will have a small indentation and in case of stainless steel you will have a high indentation then in case of abrasion you can see that two rods are fixed here and the stainless steel undergoes some high abrasion okay so that is called as hardness so it is the ability of the material to resist localized plastic deformation then stress strain curve so this is the stress strain curve for a ductile material so we have a o a b c d e f and g so we'll see all the points in detail before that we'll just compare uh, the stress strain curve for a ductile material and brittle material as i told earlier in ductile material the material will undergo plastic deformation so that is why after the elastic limit the material undergo some plastic deformation in case of brittle materials it will not undergo any plastic deformation if you bend it then automatically it will break so it will not undergo any plastic deformation so that is the difference between ductile and brittle materials so first the range o to a so the range o to a is called as proportional limit okay so within this proportional limit the stress is directly proportional to strain so we might have used uh, this equation so this is hooke's law that's it that is stress is directly proportional to strain so it is only applicable up to the point a then point b means it is elastic limit okay so up to this point the material will behave like a elastic cone so if you remove the load at this point then it will come back to its original position so that is called as elastic limit then point c and d so point c is 
upper yield point and point D is lower yield point. Okay, so at this point, the material starts to yield. Okay, so the material yields before the load and there is an appreciable strain without any increase. So when it reaches point C, automatically the material will yield to point D. Okay, so that is the difference between point C and point D. So in case of mild steel, you can see a small amount of load drop in between C and D. Okay, so that is why the point C is called as upper yield point and the point D is called as lower yield point. So once after reaching the point C, if you stop the loading, then automatically the stress will come down without any further increase in the load. That is the difference between upper yield point and the lower yield point. Then point E is called as the ultimate stress. So once after reaching the point E, neck formation is started. So neck is started to form. So the material, its diameter will reduce at this point. So this is called as necking. And the necking starts at the point E. So for any material, for to design any material for any application, you should keep the stress below the point C. Because once if it reaches the ultimate point, then the necking will take place. So once the necking is started, then the F point is breaking point. So once after the necking takes place, the stress is started to reduce because you will have some neck formation and some crack initiation in the material. So once the crack is initiated, the energy is released. So the stress is reduced and after reaching the point F, the material will fail and the material will be in two pieces. So this is all about uh, the material properties and the stress strain curve. In the next lecture, we'll see the basics of fits and tolerance. Then we'll move into the simple stress calculations. Any doubt? Material properties or low Purunjidapa?